So how do seed oils cause us to be more hungry? How do seed oils sabotage our satiety? Studies like this one done in an animal model give us some real clues. I spoke about this in more detail on a previous podcast with Tucker Goodrich. The title of this study is Dietary Linoleic Acid Elevates Endogenous 2-AG and Anandamide and Induces Obesity. Again, this is an animal model, but they fed mice different amounts of linoleic acid in their diets. And what they found was that increasing linoleic acid from 1% to 8% elevated arachidonic acid phospholipids in the liver and erythrocytes, tripled 2-AG and 1-AG and AEA, which is anandamide, associated with increased food intake, feed efficiency, and adiposity in mice. So what are 2-AG and anandamide? They are essentially cannabinoids. These are similar to the compounds found in marijuana, cannabidiol, THC, cannabidiverin. These are endogenous cannabinoids. We have them in our body because we need these neurotransmitters in our brains. We have receptors for cannabinoids in our brains, the CB1 and CB2 receptors. But in this animal study, when they were given increasing amounts of linoleic acid in the diet, they saw increasing amounts of cannabinoids, 2-AG, 1-AG, and AEA, which is anandamide, which led to increased feed efficiency, meaning that mice were incorporating more calories into their bodies. Essentially, basal metabolic rate appeared to be lowering, which is something that I'll talk about in a moment with regard to thyroid hormones in connection with linoleic acid, and they had adiposity. How fascinating is that? On the flip side, there are very interesting studies in mice showing that if you feed mice stearic acid, an 18-carbon saturated fatty acid found in animal fats, things like milk, cheese, butter, and tallow, that those mice get lean. They lose weight, they lose visceral adiposity, and they become healthy. This is one of the reasons that I'm a fan of saturated fats in animals, but I wanted to juxtapose that with an 18-carbon omega-6 polyunsaturated fat linoleic acid feeding in mice makes them fat probably because of these cannabinoids. The story becomes more interesting when you think about a drug called Ramonabant. Ramonabant was a drug approved in the early 2000s for use as an anti-obesity, as a weight loss drug. Ramonabant is a CB1, a cannabinoid 1 inverse agonist, meaning that it blocks the cannabinoid 1 receptor by activating it incorrectly. So, what you have with Ramonabant is something that is the opposite of 2-AG and anandamide, and it did lead to satiety, less feelings of hunger, and weight loss, as you can see in these trials. This is a 2006 trial from Circulation. Title is Cannabinoid 1 Receptor Antagonist Ramonabant for Management of Obesity and Related Risks. In Table 1 in this trial, you can see mean placebo subtracted one-year weight loss for Ramonabant versus currently approved anti-obesity drugs. Rio Europe, Rio Lipids, Rio North America, and Rio Diabetes were all trials, including Ramonabant, and the average weight loss was 4.7 to 5.4 kilograms over the course of months to years, with some of the longer trials being two-year treatments with Ramonabant in the Rio North America study. So not a huge weight loss, but giving a drug and doing nothing else resulted in 10 pounds of weight loss for people, which could be powerful for some people. Uh, just by affecting the CB1 receptor. The problem came later when Ramonabant for the Prevention of Cardiovascular Events, this is the Crescendo trial, was published in 2010. And if you look at this trial, you will see they said that at a mean follow-up of 13.8 months, the trial was prematurely discontinued because of concerns by health regulatory authorities in, in three countries about suicide <laughs> in individuals receiving Ramonabant. As I've spoken about a lot recently, I do have concerns about pharmaceutical industries hiding this type of data, so it's good to see that this data came out, that Ramonabant was pulled. It turns out that humans do need some neurotransmitter signaling at our CB1 receptor, or we get a little depressed, and it looked like suicide was a problem with this drug. The mechanism of the drug is what interests me, though, this anti-obesity effect that comes with a antagonism or inverse agonism at the level of the CB1 receptor in the brain. And we know that eating more seed oils, at least in mice, tickles that receptor more 
because endogenous cannabinoids, or I should say, because cannabinoids 2-AG and anandamide appear to be overproduced. What other evidence do we have regarding omega-6 fatty acids and obesity? There's a number of other interesting studies to consider. So this one is titled The Crucial Role of Dietary Omega-6 Polyunsaturated Fats in Excess Adipose Tissue Development, a Relationship to Childhood Obesity. There's an interesting chart here where they hypothesize mechanisms by which all of this happens, but the takeaway is essentially that downstream products of omega-6 fatty acid metabolism, and we're focusing mostly on linoleic acid here, may affect the differentiation of fat cells when children are growing, leading to greater adiposity later in life. There's a number of that suggests this. Another trial, an emerging risk factor for obesity, does disequilibrium of polyunsaturated fatty acid metabolism contribute to excess adipose tissue development? In the abstract, they say adipose tissue development, i.e. both size of the adipocytes, which is called hypertrophy, and number, hyperplasia, is stimulated by high dietary fat intake during early postnatal development, a susceptibility that now appears to continue well into adulthood. The authors go on to state, recent human and animal studies suggest that by altering rates of adipocyte differentiation and proliferation, differences in the composition of dietary fat may also contribute to adipose tissue development. In rodent models, the relative intake of N6 to N3, omega-6 to omega-3, is clearly emerging as a new factor in this development. In these models, linoleic acid intake raises tissue arachidonic acid, which increases prostacyclin production and in turn stimulates signaling pathways implicated in adipogenesis. Giving linoleic acid to rats makes more fat cells, especially in postnatal development. Could this be happening in humans as well? I'm worried about it, especially when you think about how many polyunsaturated fats many mothers are eating and how much of that polyunsaturated omega-6 fatty acid gets into their breast milk. 